Hey, everybody. I'm so excited about today. I have to tell you, six, eight months ago, I knew of David Meltzer. I knew he was a big time entrepreneur, speaker, author. But today I know him as all of those things and a mentor and friend. So I'm so excited to have you, Dave. You've made a big difference in the short time we've known each other. You've made a big difference in my life. And I appreciate you and everything that you do. So thanks for being here today. Well, thank you for confirming I'm on the right mission and on the right trajectory, uh, considering not only mentorship, but more importantly, the friendship that allows me to see the growth acceleration and uh, of course, the success that you're having. So thank you for having me on your show. Hey, I'm excited about it. I know you're all about the pursuit of your endless potential. And you know, the show here is called The Pursuit. So it's uh, very exciting about that. I am, um, for those that don't know Dave, Dave, your story, I love your story because you created big time business and financial success as I was reading your book and I've heard your story more and more. And, uh, but it wasn't necessarily all the spiritual success and life success you wanted. And then fast forward 2008, um, in terms of the financial stuff, I understand that you, you went bankrupt, lost it all. Lost yeah. over a hundred million dollars, certainly did. And as I look back and give meaning to the defining moments of my life, that's one of the greatest meanings that have come out of my life, the greatest lessons that have come to understand my new uh, mission and the new pursuit that I have over the last, as you know, 15 years since 2008 to empower other people, to empower other people, to make a lot of money, help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. And in that paradigm shift, the money has followed me uh, wherever I have gone, uh, but it's not the money that makes me happy. It's mm. the money that allows me to shop for the things that make me happy, uh, mm. which is why I give my book away for free. I'll do it for your audience. I'll sign them, send them, pay for shipping. All of that money allows me to build villages and schools and empower people, scholarships, all the things that truly fulfill me in my life to continue the passion, purpose, and profitability uh, that makes us all happy. Hmm, I love that. And it's it's so amazing to me that literally going through what some would have viewed as, a, viewed as a devastating experience. I mean, you assigned an entirely different meaning to it and created an, an, a whole new form of life and legacy that what wasn't even a part of your life before. I think it's so cool. Um, and, and I would have told you, you know, my basement at that time, you would think it was bad enough to, you know, go from over a hundred million dollars to nothing. But beyond that, I had to go tell my mom I went bankrupt and I lost her house as well because I didn't take my name off of her title. So I would say my basement had a basement and it's still uh, wow. that moment as well, which you would think would be a crushing, devastating moment, brought so much hope, light and love into my life when my mom's response to me telling her what had happened was that, are you okay? I love you. Do you need wow. anything? Do you need any money? And that little <laughs> glimmer of light and love wow. has inspired me and grown within my own heart to show me uh, not only show me the money, no pun intended, but mm -hmm. show me the light, the love and the lessons that I needed to learn to live this abundant life. Mm. What would you say to people if they're either A, they're going through their own big downturn, if you will, as many people have the last couple of years, or B, they've just been stuck having your own personal life experience and coach, you know, thousands and thousands of people over the planet. Now, what tip would you give them to either A, get out of it or B, how do you get unstuck? Yeah, well, let's start with unstuck because I think that uh, feeling stuck is a good feeling. That means that mm. you're putting pressure on growth and it just means that it's not happening fast enough because human capability doesn't allow us to see progress. So because we can't see the progress, we feel the progress and that feeling is called stuck mm. because we don't see the progress, but we don't fit into the old container. So we feel we're stuck. So if I locked you in a closet and you had a nice comfortable bed and you just lied there you know, high watching TV, you wouldn't feel stuck. Mm. But if you were trying to get out into a bigger room, you're going to feel stuck. Mm -hmm. So I always tell people get stuck getting stuck, right? Know what you want, who can help you, who can you help, how best to get that done with productivity, accessibility, gratitude, prioritize every day and apply your why to continue to grow until you do become aware of the progress. Now, Separately from that, from being stuck and make sure that you get stuck being stuck and enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential, which will always make you feel stuck because you're growing out of your shell. Right. Uh, hitting rock bottom or having huge challenges in your life is a different mindset. Mm. Um, it's one that you have to be able to 
adjust your identifying and utilization of fear. You see, what happens is when we have these challenges, setbacks, failures, and mistakes, especially big ones, mm -hmm. uh, we start accelerating in the wrong direction. We start listening, doing, saying, believing, and feeling the wrong things, which accelerates us into bigger void shortages, obstacles, mistakes, and setbacks in themselves. And so what I love to do for those people that feel as if they're being overwhelmed or can't get going, they procrastinate, they feel as if they're at a bottom or on the way to the bottom, is I teach them to identify and utilize fear. See, there's only two types of fear, Ben. One is the fear of the past, which usually manifests itself in regret and guilt, sure. which also will accelerate you in the wrong direction. And right. then there's fear of the future, which is worry and anxiety based. Mm -hmm. And so I have people when they feel fear, stop, breathe, identify, is this a feeling of regret or guilt of the past? Or is this a feeling of the future of worry or anxiety? And then look to see what ego-based consciousness, right? That natural trigger of fight, flee, feed, or fornicate, which one of the needs of the ego is triggered by the fear of the past or fear of the future? So hmm. do I have a need to be inferior, not worthy? Do I have a fear of be superior, uh, an ego-based consciousness of separation? Mm -hmm. Do I have a fear of you know resentment or offense or separateness, guilt? you know, any of these feelings. And then when I identify the feelings, I can then breathe through those feelings because that's an energy and apply that energy, not to accelerating in the wrong direction, farther down in the basement where your basement has a basement or accelerating in the wrong direction, creating void shortages and obstacles, but instead breathing into what is it I want today in a trajectory of what I think I want in the future yes. and change the meaning of the past to align with it. So there is a dissipation and a dissolution of the fear, which then allows you to be in the flow. So you can start helping people get help from people, get you more productive, accessible, and gracious allows you to reprioritize your day, not from what you don't want or what other people want for you, but what you want. And right. then you're now, instead of in search of your why interfering with your why you're applying your why knowing that you're connected to and through an omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing source that loves you more than your mom. So instead of being an influencer, spreading dis-ease and interference in your life, you become an influencer with confidence and coincidence and consequences that you do want. Mm, I love that. That's so good. Can we talk about, uh, as you talked about that idea where you're thinking about what I want today in relation to what I think I want in the future? Right. I remember you shared that with me a few weeks back and I never heard it put that way. Can you expand on that? Yeah, I think this is where a lot of people uh, don't understand when you say it, detach from outcomes, mm -hmm. right? Because that's always so confusing, except for, especially for hyper-aggressive entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. right? People who pursue their potential. Uh, what do you mean? You don't have goals? You don't have miles? Like, wait a second. I just have narrowed down what I can do, say, think, feel, and believe towards an outcome or a goal but I don't attach my emotions. My energy and motion is only attached to what I can do, say, think, believe, and feel today mm. in the trajectory towards making over a million dollars or graduating law school or getting that girl of my dreams, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so what I have found is if I can reconcile the infinite time zone of past and future with the man-made construct of time today, 24 hours, mm -hmm. And if I can reconcile it by saying, you know what, all of my energy and motion is going to be put towards doing, saying, thinking, believing, and feeling today towards what I think I want in the future, but mm -hmm. having radical humility that I don't know what I don't know. So I think I want to have a penthouse downtown San Diego, but mm -hmm. now because of the homeless situation, I've changed my mind of what I think I want in the future. Therefore, I have something new that I want maybe uh, you know, a different location somewhere in Dubai because there's no home homelessness and I could become a resident in Dubai. So mm -hmm. now what I do say, think, believe, and feel today is in the trajectory of Dubai, not in the trajectory of owning a penthouse in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And this creates such efficiency because so many people make the mistake 
of attaching their emotions to an outcome and then not using today and what they learned from the past in order to effectuate aggregation, compounding exponentiality and acceleration towards bigger and better for the future because they're so attached to I'm going to graduate law school. My mom wants me to be a lawyer and they end up being 55 years old, making a lot of money like their mom said they would, but mm -hmm. miserable because it's not really what they wanted. They just attach their emotions to an outcome instead of every day attaching their emotions to what they do say, think, believe and feel towards what they think they want. Amazing. Amazing. The other thing I'd love to talk and share is uh, this was about a month and a half ago. You told me about, I asked you, okay, I want to grow my income. And you talked about those five things of specifics of what we're going to focus on. Can we expand on those two? Yeah. So uh, to grow our income um, in a, the five daily practices is that, well, yeah. So, and first of all, we don't put an amount, right? We want to make as much money as fast as we can. Mm -hmm. So we want to use time to our favor. So many people, and this is where Bob Proctor, one of my mentors who had passed away this year, mm -hmm. we disagreed. And I actually changed his mind about it. He was the guy who said, I want to make a million dollars by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem with that is day one, unless you're super good or super lucky, you're not going to make a million dollars day one. So guess what? There's more resistance because now you only have 364 days right. to make a million. Yeah, And let's say you only made 10,000 in the first month. Now you only have 11 months to make 990,000. Mm -hmm. Well, things aggregate, accelerate, and compound. So what I teach people, one, is to think about abundance more than. So I'm going to live to more than 111. I'm going to empower more than a billion people in my life, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know your what, what you want personally, experientially, giving and receiving today, in the trajectory of what you think you want in the future, that income becomes a possibility. Then if you get who can help you and who you can help, it becomes a probability. Then we can really focus the mathematical equation of luck. I'm going to pay attention to the activities today in the trajectory of what I think I want with lenses of productivity, accessibility, and gratitude. Mm. Productivity, I'm going to add as much value as I can. Accessibility, be accessible to the who's and also access what I want and find the light, the love, and the lessons in the past experiences to align me to future successes and happiness. Mm -hmm. And so if you know your what, it's a possibility, your who's a probability, the how becomes your perspective, then you have the magic antidote called prioritization, knowing your now. 100% mm -hmm. of the things you do now get done. If you know your now, you'll know your next. If you know right. your now and your next, you become very efficient, effective, and statistically successful. And you now have an antidote to that feeling of overwhelmness, of feeling procrastination. And now you can, instead of searching for your why, apply your why to generate that behavior that aggregates money, income, exponentially grows that income and accelerates the income without any resistance. So if you wanna make more money faster, mm -hmm. use the what, the who, the how, the now, and the why, the, the what makes it a possibility, the who a probability, the how a perspective, the now makes it your reality. And applying your why gives you the aggregation, exponentiality, and acceleration of what you want. So you get more of that income faster. Hmm. How long have you been using that where it wasn't a specific dollar amount, but instead, I remember whether it's double my income as fast as possible, as much income as fast as possible. How long have you been using that in your own life? It's so funny because it probably has been about 11 years okay. and it started with my, my, uh, my life goal of living, meaning I shared my Laker seats with Diane Cannon, uh, a famous Academy Award winning actress, uh, right there on the baseline of Laker, uh, you know, the Lakers, it was Magic Johnson, me, Diane Cannon, and then Glenn Fry and his wife from the Eagles. Cool. Anyway, yeah. I turned to Diane and I said, you know, Diane, I'm going to live to 111. I'm born on January 11th at 111. I'm going to live to 111. And she said, oh, why are you limiting yourself? I said, what are you talking about? Nobody lives to 111. I don't know anyone lives to 111. I'm going to live. Yeah. Said, yeah, but, you know, via technology, you know, what if the average age when you're, you know, turned 70, 20 years from now or whatever is, you know, a thousand years old because of right. technology. Right. 
And you've been saying for 50 years, you're going to live to 111. You're cheating yourself. Why limit yourself? Tell people you're going to live to over 111. Right. And then she explained to me how I can create resistance uh, and also limit my own self-imagery, which we never can overachieve our own self-imagery. And I started to apply it to business, to finance, to other things in my life, to my mission. And so it was such an easy mindset change to always say over or more than, than simply put my attaching emotions to an exact amount, a man-made construct. Right. Yeah. That makes total sense. So even in people as they're doing their goal setting, then they may have a, a business milestone, an income milestone. It's not that you're opposed to that. It's just a, or more or greater or something along yeah, aimed, those lines. Aim towards the milestone. That's cool. Right. Right. But don't right. limit yourself. Right. No, that makes I'm a sense. very goal oriented person. Right. I'm a milestone person. I just have these subtle shifts of abundance and really uh, keen awareness to not limiting myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many goals do you usually focus on at any one time? So for me, I always have three non-negotiables and those I'll tell you, one is my health and I always attach time. Time to me is a quantitative dependent variable of all matter subjective matter, so past and future, and objective matter, activities in my calendar. And mm -hmm. so I'm always applying uh, that mindset to understand how time uh, can quantify what I'm doing. And so I apply 30 minutes a day minimum to people in my family. Mm -hmm. I apply a minimum of one hour to my health. Mm -hmm. And a minimum, of, this is my favorite, that changed my life, I spent a minimum amount of time studying time. Hmm. So if I made a habit or behavior of spending a minimum of 10 minutes a day studying my calendar through the lenses of productivity, accessibility, and gratitude, 10 minutes a day is worth more than 10 hours on a Saturday. Hmm. Imagine if you pay that much attention and intention on your activities to be productive, accessible, and gracious, and to be able to get the exponentiality, aggregation, and acceleration. That's why I spend minimum of two minutes a day with each of my daughters who are 24, 21, and 18. Mm -hmm. I wanted five. They only gave me two. But that two minutes a day is worth more than two hours on a Saturday. And I can't tell you when you get a little bit older and your kids get older, mm -hmm. you know, I spend more time with my 24, 21, and 18-year-old than any dad I know. Wow. That's awesome. That's really awesome. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Anyone that's been listening to the show for a while knows I'm big on meditation. I know you are too. You've been doing it every day for, I don't remember, 15, 17 years. 17 yeah. years. There you go. Can you talk about how that's played into your life and the importance of it for you personally? Absolutely. So first, I want to tell you, for those people that are resistant to meditation, mm -hmm. you're looking at the king of resisting meditation. I told the lady that told me to meditate, are you crazy? I don't have time to meditate. People who meditate are high, broke, and sick on their mom's couch doing nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, and here you're looking at someone now who 17 years later has not missed the day, 20 minutes a day of meditation. And wow. so meditation for me uh, is a progression. It's a practice. Right. So for me, it started in a state of resistance. So I just started by sitting still. I wanted to see if I could sit still for 20 minutes. And that took me a long time. Right. Almost about a year. Then, Is that right? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Then I tried to be quiet for 20 minutes. Yeah. And then that took like a half a year. Yeah. Then I tried to raise my awareness when I could be quiet. And that took about three months. Then as I got better at awareness, I started to try to transcend the information from my awareness into my daily practices and activities. Hmm. And so for me, that led to having an unwinding routine at night. So mm -hmm. I would say my tomorrow starts today mm -hmm. where I put my mind, my body and soul in a position not only to recover, which is obvious to most people why sleep is so important. Although the majority of the people on earth go to bed at night and wake up more tired, they don't recover. Mm -hmm. But for me, access became a big deal because if I put my mind, body, soul in a position to recover and access then when I put myself, when I woke up in a position to transcend what I've been able to access, devoid of my consciousness, I was able to receive so much more, elevate my plateau and baseline for the day so that instead of living my life like a tube, food in, food out, 
Mm -hmm. rolling a boulder every day to the top of the hill just to have it roll down in the morning. Mm -hmm. I continue to plateau and grow, which is aligned with the name of your show Mm -hmm. because I now pursue my potential every day, but I have a head start every day. I'm not starting at the same point of pursuit. Hmm. And when you're talking about access, you're talking about that infinite wisdom that you're able to draw in and then apply in your life. Is that correct? Information. You got it. That infinite wisdom. Yeah. How can I take info info from the universe yes. and put it into action, information, a materialization of thought? I have a question for you personally. So how do I apply that in my own life of getting access to that information? Well, first of all, know that it's a practice. Right. So I use golfing as my best analogy to how this works because I've never, and I've been around the greatest athletes in the world. Mm -hmm. I've never seen one go to a range, grab a golf club the very first time and hit it. Right. (laughs) Right. Right. I don't care how great of an athlete you are. It just doesn't happen. That's the way, that's the way I see this practice of being able to transcend information. So if you start with the mindset that, you know, I'm at the golf range it's going to take me a little while to get my swing down. Mm-hmm. So you got to do it every day and you have to ask for help. Mm-hmm. So whether it's guided so many w- better ways than there were 17 years ago, right? You know, there's, you know, headspace, mm-hmm. tons of great apps mm-hmm. that will help you practice. Mm-hmm. And for me, I start with just sitting still, then being quiet, then awareness, then transcendence. And there's mm-hmm. tons of help out there. Mm-hmm. Practice every day, give it a minimum amount of time every day that you commit to it as a non-negotiable. And I promise you sooner than later, you will transcend that information and access more of the truth, more of your potential than ever before. Amazing. Dave, thank you so much for the time. I'm so excited to be together doing this. And I've loved all the time that we have spent up till now. I love today, especially too. And I appreciate you so much. I know your mission and I'm excited to help as a part of that too. So thanks for being here. If everyone in your community can email me, david at dmelter.com for your community, Ben, I will sign a book. I'll send it to them, pay for shipping and the book exercises, daily practices, values. Please email me, david at dmelter.com. I want to thank you for helping me with my mission because you definitely are one of the thousand that will empower a thousand to empower a thousand to be happy. Amazing. Thanks, David. And everybody, as you're looking up, if you're new to following David, make sure you search David Meltzer, not Dave Meltzer. You'll get mixed up with the wrestling announcer. But (laughs) That's right. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. Thank you.